In special relativity, there is this phenomenon called length contraction, which says that the measured length of an object depends on the relative velocity of the object and the observer. But this is really awkward and difficult thing to accept, because how can a solid object shrink just because we are moving relative to it? Is it really true that a solid object can shrink due to relativity, or it is just an illusion? The first option is suspicious though, because there is just simply no way a distant observer could change the size of an object just by changing its relative motion. So what is really going on here? When we say special relativity, it can spark a wrong idea that we now have more relative quantities than we had before in classical physics. But this is not true. Special relativity just means that some quantities that we thought to be absolute are now relative, and some quantities that we thought to be relative are now absolute. One of such quantities is speed through space-time. In classical physics, it is a relative quantity, but in special relativity, it is an absolute quantity. So, the special relativity is just a trade-off between relative and absolute quantities. And one important thing that becomes relative in special relativity is simultaneity. This basically means that if one observer experiences two spatially separated events at the same time, this won't be true for an observer that is moving relative to these events. And this is the crucial ingredient to understand the length contraction, because relative simultaneity breaks the very definition of quantity called the length. So, what is actually quantity called length? Imagine there is you and an object you want to measure the length of. If you have a ruler, you can establish your coordinate system, so you know the distance from you to every point in the universe. Now you take the distance of one end of the object and subtract the distance of the other end, and the absolute value of this difference is the length of the object, right? So the definition of length is easy. You just take the positions of both ends of the object and subtract them. But is this definition really good enough, because what if the object was moving? If it's moving and you take the position of one end and then the other, you might find out that the length is higher or lower depending on the ordering in which you measure the positions of both ends of the object. Therefore, if you want a good definition of length, then you have to specify the time at which you measure the two positions. And of course, the only possible way to do this consistently is if you measure it at the same time. In this way, it doesn't matter whether the object is moving or not, you will always measure the same length. Therefore, the length is a good quantity, since it doesn't depend on the observer, so everybody in the universe would measure the same value. This definition, though, is only good if you have an absolute simultaneity. But this is where our definition breaks when we jump into special relativity, because in special relativity there is no such thing as absolute simultaneity. To give you some practical example, imagine you have a ship and you are at rest relative to this ship, and you measure its length to be 5 meters. Now imagine an observer moving relative to this ship, and he wants to measure the length of the ship, so he measures the positions of front and back end of the ship simultaneously and subtract them. He finds out that the ship is just 4 meters long, but how so? This is, however, no surprise for the observer that is in the ship's rest frame, since in his frame of reference, the moving observer measured the front end of the ship first and then the back end of the ship later. So, if the object is moving relative to you, you have a different simultaneity plane than the observer in the object's rest frame, and therefore there is no wonder you are going to disagree on the result because you are comparing different things. So the problem of length contraction is not that solid objects shrink just because someone is moving, but it is because the quantity called the length is no longer well-defined quantity in special relativity. And that is the whole story, so there is not any mystical force acting on the object just because someone is moving. If you want to define a quantity called the length in special relativity, then you have to also specify in which frame of reference it should be measured. And this is why we have the quantity called 
proper length and it is simply the length of the object in its rest frame. After all, you don't have to worry that you are losing information about the world around you just because you can't measure the length of the object directly. All you have to do to get the proper length is to multiply it by the gamma factor, which depends on the velocity. Does all this mean that the length contraction is just an illusion though? Well, no, because the coordinate length you measure has actually the same impact on you as the classical length in Newtonian physics. So it doesn't matter that the length is a relative quantity. The thing you measure, even though it's relative, is an important quantity for you in your frame of reference. Therefore, if you had a garage that is 4 meters long and you want to park a car in a garage that you measure to be 4 meters long, you can still do it. It would fit inside in a sense that you can close both doors of your garage simultaneously. The fact that the proper length of the car is 5 meters is irrelevant for you. But from the point of view of the car, you would not be able to close the door simultaneously because your garage is just too small. But simultaneity is relative, so who cares? If you are interested more in such paradoxes, I recommend you this video about the Barn Paradox, which is caused by the naive usage of length contraction phenomena. I strongly recommend you to check it out and thank you for watching and I see you there.